of those who are logging in online, those Almighty God who are tuning in to hear from the throne room of heaven today. Mighty God and King, I pray in your mercy, have compassion on someone today and deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Mighty God, your word declares that you came to save that which was lost. God saved somebody who was lost today. I pray that you would deliver somebody today, Father, who believe they are so far gone that you have forgotten them. Remind them that you have not forgotten. Oh, that you still care and that you still love and that your eye behold the good and the evil. You're yeah. still watching yeah. over us. Yeah. Oh, and you're still keeping us. Mighty God and King, lift somebody to the out of their burden. Open the prison bars to and set somebody free in the mighty name of Jesus. Free in their mind. Free in their spirit today. Oh, mighty God, I pray that you have your way. Breathe over the airwaves today, mighty God. As the church in session today comes to you, we believe that whatever we ask, we believe in God, it shall be done. Mighty God, move some mountains today. Level some plague field today, mighty God. And let your people know that you are God and you still reign. Amen. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks today and we place all things into your hands and we say, Jesus, have your way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody just clap your hands and give God praise. Yeah. 
to me. Hallelujah, you are everything to me, Lord. Oh, Lord, you are I get my strength, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, you are the Lord of God. It's you, oh God, it gives you all that I need. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, you are
Would you bow your heads with me at this time as we go to the Lord in prayer? I'm going to invite our pastor, elect Pastor Williams, would you come and pray for this prayer request of our loved ones this morning? What a wonderful name yes. it is. The name of Jesus. The precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, the great healer. Hallelujah. What a wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. A name that we can call him. Whatever our needs are. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Let us all come together. Let us join together in one spirit. Let us see ourselves by the throne of God. Let us see ourselves using our imagination, bowing before the great I am. Hallelujah. The scripture said, he was pierced for our transgression, and he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we're healed. The scripture said we can come in confidence to the throne of God. Heavenly Father, we come to you in confidence this morning. Based on your written words, your inspired word, your God breathed word, that give us that authority to come into your presence. Uh, because of the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross, we can come boldly to you. This morning, God, you're not far from us. You're not far removed from us this morning. You hear our pain. You know our needs. Oh, God, I'm not able to recall all the names that were mentioned. But God, you foreknew those names that you know this morning would be coming to you in picture, Lord God, supplication, Lord God, on behalf of all those who are in need this morning. Oh, Father God, the name, the Scots, is in my head because of the loss of their loved one. Oh, God, their names I don't recall, but I say, Lord, you know. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, you know their cry. You know their situation individually. Oh, God, you know the rippling effect of what's happened to them, how it affects the family, Lord God. Oh, God, how it affects the finances, how it affects everything, Lord. You understand and you care. You are faithful, God, because of your great love. The scripture said we are not destroyed. Oh, God, because your compassion never dies. Great is thy faithfulness. So this morning, Lord God, I pray for something miraculous to take place, Lord God. Oh, God, you're still, Lord God. Oh, God, you're still working miracles, oh, God. Because you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, Lord, I call upon you. I beseech you, Lord God. Oh, God, my faith looks up to thee. Oh, thou Lamb of Calvary, my Savior divine. Oh, God, I pray for the Scott family at this time to be comforted, oh, God, because you are the God of all comfort, oh, God. I pray, oh, God, that you will let them feel, oh, God, the need, oh, God, to come together as one and draw closer to you, even in the midst of missing their loved ones. Oh, God, that's where true peace comes from. Yes, it comes from you, Lord God, because you said you will cover us under your wings, Lord God. So, Lord, I pray for that family, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that just as the woman pressed you yes. in the crowd, Lord God, just to touch the hem of your garment. Lord, I pray that those who are not feeling well this morning, those who are just hearing us online and cannot come to the house, Lord God, of worship, but I pray that they they will find that yes, urge and that need to press through this morning. It's a battle, it's a fight, but Lord, give them that strength because it's written, yes. oh God, that it's you who give us the desire, yes. oh God, and the power to do what pleases you. We can't do anything of ourselves. 
we have to rely on you, Lord God. I bring them in your very presence this year, yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. I put them, Lord God, in your very hand. Oh, hallelujah. And your kingdom, Lord God. Because that which we, Lord God, are placing your care, Lord God, you have the power, Lord God. Keep it in the very hand. We'll place them in your hand. We'll place them with an expectancy. We're not just going through a motion. We're expecting a move from you this
and will actually give you glory and honor and praise just for who you are. Just for who you are. An awesome God. A wonderful God. An excellent God. A marvelous God. A much, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Give you glory, honor, and praise. It all belongs to you, oh God. It all belongs to you, Lord Jesus. Everything on this earth belongs to you. The earth is yours, and the fullness thereof all are they that dwell therein. It all belongs to you, oh God. Lord, we honor you, Lord Jesus. We lift you up, oh, hallelujah, almighty God, who sits high and looks low, oh, hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, oh, hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, the name of Jesus where men can be saved. The name of Jesus where men can be healed. The name of Jesus, oh, hallelujah, where men can be delivered. And so at this time, oh God, we call on your name. Oh, hallelujah, we call on your name. And let's go with your name, oh Lord, written on our foreheads, written on our hearts, oh God, even as we go away, let us take the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, just thank you and bless you. And Lord, as we're about to go into your word, I pray, Lord, you open up our hearts to receive of you, Lord Jesus. Help us to receive of you, to be filled. Oh, God, because as we sung earlier, this is our daily bread. So, Lord, we come at your table. Oh, hallelujah. To partake of your word. Fill us up, Jesus. Fill us up, oh God. Fill our hearts, oh Lord. Fill our cups, oh God. Till they're running over. And so, Lord, I bless you and thank you. As I stand here before you, empty me, Lord. And fill me with your power and your anointing. As I come to you, Lord. Amen. Others may try and discredit him, but he's a good God. He's a good God. He remains the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So we can try and discredit him, but he's still, even when this earth is gone, he's still God. Oh, hallelujah. Even when the bank account is empty, he's still God. Oh, hallelujah. He's still God. But we can try. And you can try. They are trying to discredit him, but he's still God. There are problems that we are facing. He's still God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes it looks like we're walking in a desert, but he's still God. Hey. Hallelujah. Though the ground around us may be sinking, but he is still God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. You are still God. Nothing is done without your approval. Because you are still God. Amen. Turn your Bible with me to Psalm 23. Familiar Psalm. You don't have to turn to it. Some of us know it by heart. So you can just flip to the, the, the memory bank in your head as you, as you go uh, to it. And it simply says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will walk there no evil. For you are with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And amen. 23rd Psalm, yes, the familiar scripture to most. Um, most of us, uh, it's a good night prayer, or you know, we are very familiar with this. And so, you probably have heard this preached time and time again, even myself. 
have preached on this psalm before. But the word of God is such that new life yeah. can come from things that have done before. So yes, we may have heard of this, but God is so is, is a God that uh, we, we can't understand him. Yeah. And yes, we may have read this before, but God can bring newness. Yeah. That's how he fills us. Yes, we can read the scriptures time and time again, but God is so good that he can bring something new into our souls in something that we've read before. And so when I spoke on this the last time, I was talking on being connected to the source and what it means to be connected to the source and thus we have the psalm. But today God is has given you meaning to this psalm. And as we've learned last week, in that wonderful message, war time is coming. Yeah. And we have to be prepared and ready for the battle ahead. Yeah, that's right. The battle we're facing, it is will be fierce. You may even lose some things along the way. But God is in control. He's still God. David, the author, is reminding us that God is all we need because we will lack nothing in him. We as children of God, we are to adorn ourselves in the righteousness of Christ. And when we do so, we then make ourselves as targets for the hatred of the world. And in turn, we have to fight. But God is on our side. He is our ultimate safety. So yes, as we choose to walk this Christian life and we are adorning ourselves in the righteousness of Christ, we are going to be hated by the world. We can see what's happening now. We are being hated by the world. And so we have to uh, prepare ourselves. But God is not going to just throw us into the battle and not have us uh, prepared or have everything that we need to face the battle ahead. So the open line, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, is a declaration made by David announcing who God is. This declaration was not made lightly as it was coming from a place of experience as David too was a shepherd. And as we learned last week, David understood his assignment as a shepherd. When he was being chosen as king, when Samuel, when God said, listen, I'm done with Saul. I can't do him anymore. I need a new and proper king to rule my people. And he said, go to a land, and you will see Jesse. And one of his sons, you shall anoint him, so forth and so forth. So when he was being anointed, when God, or Samuel, sorry, came and said, yes, you are the one I want to anoint as king. What did David do? David didn't just drop everything at the spot and say, okay, I'm king now. Yeah, no, he said, okay, thanks, good, but I've got my sheep to attend to. I've got my assignment as a shepherd to attend to. So he did not forsake what his job was, but continued in that assignment till he was ready to be king. Because if he had taken over the kingship at that point, he would not have been ready for what was to come. So he didn't become king on the spot, but he kept doing what he was called in that season that was a shepherd. And in so doing, laying the foundation for him becoming king. And in turn, in some majestic way, equates that to God. So David says, I shall not want. He is acknowledging how completely reliant he is on God as his shepherd. I shall not want because God, as a good shepherd, will ensure I have everything I need. I shall not want, not because of what I have done or can do, but because God loves me. I shall not want because I know God personally as my shepherd. David can say that with such assurance. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Why? Because when he was in the season of being a shepherd, he saw the hand of God move in his life. While he could stand before the lion and say, listen, the same God that delivered me out of the hand of the lion and of the bear is the same God who delivered me from you, O Goliath. Because 
as you recognize that his sufficiency is in God. War time is coming. And so under a metaphor borrowed from the scenes of pastoral life, which David was familiar with, he described God's providential care in providing refreshment, guidance, protection, and abundance, and so affording grounds of confidence in his perpetual favor. So if you look at the whole entire psalm, it's someone speaking of, uh, of confidence. Yeah. It's not likely just to say the Lord is my shepherd. That has to come from a place of understanding, a place of experiencing God, for you to declare, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You have to be confident, because if you're not confident, you say, oh, you know, I think the Lord, I think he is my shepherd. I mean, you know, but you have to, you come from a place of confidence, because you have experienced God. And so even, that's what David said, I was young, I'm now old, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or the seed begging for bread. Because he saw the hand of God from the days of his youth fighting the bear and the lion till he became king of Israel until his death bed. The hand of God has been, they said, I can go to hell and God is there. I can go to the ends of the earth, God is there because God is still God. So they can try and take away people's jobs because of not taking the vaccine. God is still God. He will provide because that's why they say, I, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So yes, they may take away things from you, but I can say with full assurance, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Confidence. That's why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when the decree was given, you shall vow to the king. They said, no, we're not going to do it. Even if God does not deliver us, we will not bow. And in turn, when they were thrown into the fire, it wasn't just you, but Jesus was standing there with them. That's why David can say with assurance, the Lord, because he knew God is standing with him every step of the way. Help us, Lord. So we look at verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He brings refreshment. So yes, the battle that we face in our life, yes, it's rough. It's rocky. But God will bring refreshment. It's like you're running a, a 5K marathon. Yes, it's, it's tough. And you're running and... At some point, you're ready to collapse and you're ready to fall over. But then there's someone there waiting on the sideline with a bottle of water to refresh you, to rejuvenate you so you can keep going on. Same way with God. He's not going to send you to the battlefield and not have your refreshment waiting for you. He will provide for you in every instance of your life, in the good times and the bad times. Because everything, our sufficiency is in him. And so green pastures or pastures of tender grass are mentioned not in respect to food, but as a place of cool and refreshing rest. And the still waters are literally waters of stillness whose quiet flow invites to repose. So they are contrasted with the boisterous streams on the one hand, and stagnant offensive pools on the other. So there are going to be times where you're going to feel exhausted in the fight. There are going to be times when you're overwhelmed in the fight. There are going to be times when you, you're ready to throw in the towel, but God steps in right on time and leads you to that still water where you can rest. So you can revive again and keep going on. Then he gives guidance to restore my soul in verse 3. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. To restore your soul or to revive is to quicken it or to relieve it. And we see in Psalm 19 and 7. Love, Lord, is perfect. What? Restoring the soul. Soul. 
The word of the Lord is what revives us, is what keeps our soul. So if you are walking the Christian walk are not in the word of God, how then are you to be revived? Because there are some times when the enemy lifts some shot, we drop. But if you're not in the word, how are you going to stand up again and keep going on? Get in the words that you can be revived. Paths of righteousness. These are those, sorry, those of safety as directed by God and pleasing to him. For his name's sake is regard for his perfections pledged for his people's warfare. Well, sorry, welfare. So God will lead us in paths of righteousness. God is the master tactician. He's the master tactician. His war room doesn't sleep. God's war room doesn't sleep. God doesn't sleep. So he has everything lined out for us. But it's just for us to trust him and believe in him in the path that is your line for us. David would not have imagined him himself being king. He was just a lowly shepherd boy. But he fulfilled that role to the fullest that when he became king, he was ready. He was prepared in the trenches so that when he became king, he was ready. God has to bring us through some trenches so that we, we can be ready for the position that he has called us to. We have to go through some trenches so that God can prepare us for the position that he has for us. We have to be ready. More time is coming. God is looking for people who are not fit for battle, but who are ready for battle. You to hear me out? God is looking for people who are not fit for battle, but who are ready for battle. When Samuel came to look for, for the, to, to anoint the king, Jesse said, here's my son. He's tall, handsome, he's buff. He can go and do it. What did Samuel say? Ah, God don't look at that. He looks at the heart. So you can be fit for battle. You can have the, the best armor made out in gold or silver, the best sword, but if your heart is not ready for battle, how can you go on the battlefield? It's that same son that was fit and buff that when Goliath came, he ran because he was not ready for battle. But when David came, who, oh, oh, hallelujah, that's why. He was in the shepherd field because he gained life experience. And he saw God for who he was. And that's why when David came to anoint that the king, he said, no, not this one. Because his heart wasn't fit, ready for battle. But David's heart was ready for battle. Why? Because he dealt with the bear. He dealt with the lion. He dealt with so many other things while dealing with the sheep. So when the lion came, he just saw him as another enemy. That's why when he came, I uh, saw to try to put on the, 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 the armor. I said, ah, this don't work. I'm not used to this in my warfare. I'm going to take what I'm used to. That's my sin shot on five stones. God is ready for people who are not fit but ready for battle. Readiness comes from the heart because you have to be prepared to die on that battlefield. You have to be ready to die on that battlefield for God. He died on the cross for our sins. It was very painful, but he died on the cross. So we have to be ready to die for him as well. So it's not a matter of having the best armor suit, but it's having the heart that is ready to die for the king. Because when the command goes out, War is coming, get ready. If your heart is not ready, you ain't going to be in the battlefield. You ain't going to be in the battlefield because you're going to be like that son that was had the stuff, who was big, had the muscles, but saw the light, the other direction he went because he said, no, I can't deal with this. His heart wasn't there, but David's heart was there. That's why he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. It's a declaration. I want to have, like, no, this week I urge you, church, brethren, 
as you wake up in the morning, you just say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yes, the bank account may have a negative balance, but the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. There is no food in the cupboard, but the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And look at God make a way for you. And so he guides us. He guides us. He's a master practitioner. We forget the enemy that we're fighting. God already knows. God already knows the enemy that we are facing. He made him. So he knew Satan from before we even, before the world was even formed. So whatever tricks or plans or whatever things that the enemy can try, God already knows. Mm -hmm. Because he knows him. Just as much he knows us, he knows him. Yeah. And so because he knows the enemy that we're facing, God is then able to whisper into our ear and say, Hey! He's coming! He has X, Y, and Z. And then you can then prepare yourself for him to come. But sometimes our ears are locked off. God is whispering the battle plan to us, but we ain't listening. God is whispering the battle plan to us, but we ain't listening. And then we turn and walk right into the, the enemy's plan. And say, ha ha! I got you. But God is still faithful, and even when we fall into the pit, He's still there to rescue us. And that's when we can then brush ourselves off and say, Thank you, Jesus. I made a mistake, but Lord, I'm going on with you again. That's how faithful He is. Because this walk that we have is a faith journey. If we don't have God guiding us, we cannot make it. And that's why the, the, the writer of Hebrews says we have a host of witnesses. Therefore, we have a host of witnesses. He's talking about those he mentioned in, in chapter 11. He starts off with chapter 12. Therefore, we have a host of witnesses. So when we are going through our struggles, we have a host of witnesses that we can call on. So when we are going through the desert, we say, hey, Brother Moses, come along, Sammy. Moses went to the desert so he can tell you how to navigate yourself. Oh, hallelujah. In the desert. The whole of witnesses. Abraham walked by faith. Daniel walked by faith. We have a list of people that walk by faith. When we are going through our troubles, look to the walls of witnesses who can help you through your troubles. I shall not want. Number four. Sorry, verse four. It gives protection. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what I will fear no evil. For you are with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. In the darkest and most trying hour, God is near. In the darkest and most trying hour, God is near. Sometimes I to forget. Even when it's not the darkest hour, God is still there. But we sometimes forget God is there even when it's nice and bright outside. But when it becomes dark and we can't see our way, that is when we want to call on God. God is not ATM machine. God is there in the good times and the bad times. But especially in the bad times when we cannot see our way. The valley of the shadow of death is a ravine overhung by high uh, uh, high cliffs filled with dense forests and well calculated to inspire dread to the timid and afford a covert sorry, afford a covert to beasts of prey while expressive of any great danger or cause of terror it does not exclude the greatest of all to which is not properly applied and which the terms suggest so when ye do I walk the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That means whatever dark valley that we're going through, even now, we're dealing with this pandemic, it's a dark time. But I'm here to remind you, we have not to fear because the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. Yes, they're going to take away jobs, they're going to take away all these things from us. They can try. 
but our sufficiency is in Christ Jesus. Our sufficiency is in Christ Jesus. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. All are they that dwell within the silver and the gold belong to him. The cattle and a thousand hills belong to him. So they can take it away, sure. But God, whose resources of the earth belongs to him, it belongs to me because I am a child of God. So go on, take away, that's fine. But I shall not want because I have a God who is bigger. Hallelujah. I have a God whose bank account can supersede all the bank accounts of this earth. So that's fine. Take away. But God will increase. Amen? Amen. That rod and that staff are symbols of a shepherd's office. By them, he guides his sheep. The rod and the staff, he uses to, the rod is used to ward off any wolf that might come and try and take the sheep. And the staff is used to bring the sheep home. When the sheep starts to stray. So with these, God is protecting us. That's why we have no need to worry. Because if we have a God who's wielding his, his staff, why do we have to worry or fret? If we have a God who is fighting for us, why do we have to fret? If we have a God who fights for us, there is no need to fear. That's why David, that's why I like David enough. David understood God. He understood God, I tell you. That's why you can see through the Psalms how David speaks of God because he understood God and who he is. We need to get to that place where, where we understand God. That way we can stand with such a boldness and authority as David had because he understood God. He said, he's my shield and my buckler, my strong tower, my hiding place. That he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress. And God in him will I trust. That's him because he understood God. We have to get a place where we truly understand God. And when we understand God, we can walk with boldness and authority. Amen. And we can say like David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And as with that same authority, David said to Goliath, moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine." That's the boldness and authority that David had because he recognized who was in his back pocket. Yeah. I mean, God is not necessarily in our back pocket, but who was in his corner? The fight that we're facing, brethren, is going to be fierce, but we have God who will make every provision for us to come out unscathed in this battle. The three Hebrew boys were not singed or burned in the fire for not bowing or, or following the king's decree because they don't follow the world and its standards, but they follow King Jesus. They follow King Jesus. They follow the word of God. Help us, Lord, that we will follow your word. Even if it takes us to the brink of death, we have to follow the word of God. And in so doing, God will provide us with his son. He says, great is thy faithfulness. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Amen. And lastly, when this fight is over, we will receive abundance. Verses 5 and 6. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. This shows another figure. So another figure expresses God's provided care. He will provide a table or food for you, literal, spiritual, 
so much so that you even share with your enemies. That's what God will provide. That even your very enemy will sit at the table with you. He makes you at peace even with your enemy. That's how much God can provide for you. And even the very supervisor who's not giving you shifts at work, who's giving you a hard time, we the one same one giving you a promotion. Amen. That's what it means to sit at the table. So it's okay. That's fine. But God will provide. They can take away shifts from me. They can do whatever they want to do. But I am a child of the king and God will provide for his children. I fully understand that I'm a parent. I know what it means to provide for your children. And so I understand when God says he will take care of me. The same way I take care of my children, the same way God takes care of all of his children across the entire globe. Listen, God is past finding out. I mean, I find it hard just dealing with two. Difficult. But imagine dealing with millions of people across the world. God, you're, 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 you'll go crazy. But God is a God that he is with every single person on this earth, good or bad. He provides for them. That's the kind of God that we serve, a big God. And that's what he says, neither slumbers nor sleeps. Sometimes, yes, I would like to sleep. I shut my eye because the, the kids drive me crazy. Yes, sometimes we, yeah, listen, God sometimes will sleep too, you know. He will love to sleep because we drive him crazy sometimes. He's been telling us, hey, don't go over the cliff. And you keep going over the cliff. But God is merciful and gracious. His hand is always there. Even when we don't follow his words, he's still there. Because he cares for us. He loves us. That's why Paul can say with such assurance, no height, nor death, nor any such thing shall separate me from the love of God. Nothing. No peril, no sickness, nothing. The sword, famine, nothing on this earth can separate me from the love of God. That's why David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, because he loves him. And because God loves us, he will take care of us. Because he loves us. Not because he has to, or because he wants to. If God had his way, why some of us would have been gone a long time. But because he loves us. The love of God, our rich Measureless and strong, it shall more than you. Help us, Lord. The oil we, we see here is a symbol of gladness. So imagine you go through a battle and you're glad. What an image. You just fall, you're probably dead tired, but God is so good that when you fight this battle, you'll come out smiling. That's what God is, you know. You fight this battle, you be, you, you imagine. Because David was a man of war. You know, David was a man of war. I tell you, that you read in Samuel and the King, you see David was a man of war. But he came out smiling because he knew that God was on his side. So we can too can smile in our storm. We too can smile in this pandemic because God is on our side. The cup, which represents abundance, are prepared for the child of God, who may feast in spite of his enemies, confident that this favor will attend him. This beautiful psalm, most admirably, sets before us is a chief figure, that of a shepherd, the gentle, kind, and sure care extended to God's people, who, as a shepherd, both rules and feeds them. The closing verse shows that the blessings mentioned are spiritual. So yes, we may not see physically the blessing, but we will be rewarded. For the work that we do on this earth, we will be rewarded. So keep on the fiery line. That's the sign that it says. Keep on the fiery line. Yes, we've gone through some stuff. That's okay, but keep on the fire line because we shall be rewarded in heaven. 
I go to prepare a place for you. My father's house has what many mansions. So we have our reward. So don't back down. Keep on the fiery line. Lastly, mercy is the covenant word rendered steadfast love. We see in Psalm 17 and 7. Together with goodness, it suggests a steady kindness and support that one can count on in the family or between firm friends. With God, these qualities are not merely solid and dependable, but vigorous. For to follow does not mean to bring up the rear, but to pursue. As surely has the judgment to pursue the wicked. And we see in Psalm 83 and 15. So mercy and goodness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So God will pursue us till he have us together with him. We will live eternally with him. He wants every person on this earth to be with him. But not all are going to be with him. That's a sad reality. Not all are going to be with him. But we, as a children of God, have to ensure that we are in that number that's going to be with him. That when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall arise, I want to be in that rising. Amen? Amen? I want to be in that rising that I can get my glorified body and be with Christ forever. Surely goodness and mercy. I follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Not just in his house, but dwell in his presence. That we need to dwell in the house of the Lord, to dwell in his presence. You're not know, have a physical house, but dwelling in the presence of God. And that's what David did. The Lord. For him Praise to be able to lead the children of Israel the way he did, he had to have been in the presence of God. He was in the presence of God, you know, he was in the field of the sheep, bleating. And the wolf and the bear and the lion and all sort of things came to eat up his sheep. He was still in the presence of God. Even when he was running away from Saul, he was still in the presence of God. Till he became king of Israel, he was still in the presence of God. That's why David was able to dance like he did. They thought he was drunk, but he was in the presence of God. Dwell in the presence of God. And you shall not lack anything. And because he was in the presence of God always, he can say with such assurance, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Or in some of the versions, I lack nothing. So those who have been with God for many, many, many years, continue being with God. Young people who are just coming up, Continue being with God. Once you stay with Him, I tell you, and those older saints can tell you who have been with God, have seen the hand of God move in their life, and can testify to the power of God. So, young people, I urge you, continue with God. Stay with Him because you will not lack anything. He will supply every single need that you may have. Not any wants. Because sometimes you have wants. God don't yeah. deal with wants. But he deals with your need. That's why we have to differentiate between a need and a want. Sometimes we think the want is a need, but not so. God will supply our needs. So yes, you may want a nice Ferrari. But God is going to give you a Corolla. Because that is what you need. Yes, you may want to have billions of dollars in the bank account, but God is going to give you what you need. And in that little that God gives becomes much in his kingdom. Amen? The small that God gives becomes much in his kingdom. Amen? Stand with me. Father, we just thank you and bless you. We're so grateful for your word today that reminds us the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. You make us to lie down in green pastures. It leads us 
by the still waters. You protect us, you guide us. You are always there, Father. Every minute, every hour of every day, of every week, of every month, of every year, you are always there. 365 days of the year. You were there from the beginning of the world. And you will still be there after. Because you are God. Help us, O oh Lord, to understand more of you. Help us, O oh Lord, to understand who you are, Lord. To grasp the essence of you, O oh God. David grasped the essence of who you are. And that's why he can say with such authority that you were his shepherd. Yes. Help us, O oh Lord, to be at that place where we can walk with our held heads, with our heads held high, and we can say with such assurance that the Lord is our shepherd; we will not want. Yes, many of your Father are facing difficulties during this pandemic, but God, you are able to supply every single need. Some, O oh Lord, are being affected by losing their job. God, but you're able to supply. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Holy, 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 holy. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. The same God that stood with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire, the same God will stand by your children, oh God, during these difficult times. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, a blessing upon your children. I pray, God, as they go forth, Father, that your blessing will be upon them. That your anointing will be upon them. In the name of Jesus. That they will receive divine favor. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God. Have your way in your people, oh God. Cover them, Father, on your mighty wings, oh God. Because we are facing, oh Lord, an enemy out there, Father, who is not playing fear. But I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you prepare our hearts. Prepare our minds, oh God. Prepare us, Father, for what is to come. Because we don't know what is to come, but Lord, you know. And because you know and see the panels of time, Lord, you can whisper in our ears, Lord. Speak to us, oh God, in this day and age. Speak to us, oh hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Speak to us, oh God. Help us, Father, to be ready, Lord. To be ready at all times. Because we don't know what is to come. But Lord, have our hearts ready. Have our hearts ready, Father. Some of us may be going through some trying times right now. But God, you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask, think, or imagine. So I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. How awesome is that? A God who made heaven and earth is able to supply my needs. The same God who said, let there be light, and there was light, can speak life into your situation. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, the same God that spoke the waters into existence, can speak springs of living water in our dead situation. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. The same God who allowed the dry bones to come alive again. The same God. Oh, hallelujah. Can restore our souls. And so, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. That each and every single one of us here in this place. That will be hidden in you. That will be hidden in you, Lord Jesus. That will have the blood of Jesus. On our foreheads, uh, that will have the name of Jesus written on our hearts, uh, that come to our sign, seal, and delivered for you, O oh God, in your glory. Let your anointing rest, remain, and abide with us, O oh God. Even when we leave this place, O oh God, and we go to our various workplaces, 
work with God, Lord. Let your anointing and favor be upon every single children in this house and those online, oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus. We say we're the head and not the tail. We are above and not the mind. We shall be lenders and not borrowers. In the name of Jesus. Bless your people, oh God. Bless your people. Bless your people in the name of Jesus. In your name, Father. Ignore the name. Can be signed. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, Jesus. No other name. Oh, hallelujah. Can be signed on this decree. But the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The word that the Lord has sent for us this morning. So grateful, but I want to remind and encourage us that we'll take heed and pay attention to the word that comes to us. God has sent the words. Uh, to encourage us in a time like this. And uh, while um, the word of God were being delivered, this one verse came to share and to encourage you to go. Therefore, since a promise remains of the eternal of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you see him to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter the rest. As he said, I want to encourage us, let the word of God dwell in us richly. Let it remain, let us gather understanding, understand what the word of God is saying to us in a time like this. Let your soul rest in the Lord. God bless you and I thank each one for participating and listening to the word. Uh, the prayer of faith has been prayed, and you have not known the Lord, you're encouraged to turn to him. Um, we will continue our worship throughout the week. However, we want to call you to join with us on Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. for our prayer and Bible study. Indeed, you can join us at 1-867-292-3030 and enter the ID code 883-4240. And indeed, you can contact the office if you could leave us a message and we'll be glad to return your call. You're also, your gift, gift of offering and your tithes are always welcome and needed to continue this great work of the Lord. So please, you desire to e-transfer, please do so at Scarborough Family Worship Center at gmail.com. And also, you can also call the office. We'll be more than happy to pick up your offering to the glory of the Lord. Therefore, before we pause for another continued um, update, may the Lord bless you, 
May the Lord keep you. And may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace always. As you may pause for a short update of the coming event.